is truly an honor for me. Uh, this is the inaugural Akira Chicks Women in Tech Conference. And when I was asked to keynote this, uh, it's unlike any other keynote I've given. Uh, sometimes I talk to other audiences around the world, but this one is particularly meaningful because uh, this has been a really incredible week, not only for the Ushahidi team, but also for the iHub team, and especially for the Akira Chicks team. So, um, Thank you very much for inviting me to, to share a few words uh, as we begin this special day. Uh, the new tagline for Akira Chicks is particularly inspiring, so let's unpack it a little bit. Um, the first part of it is it says, she builds. Uh, now this is something that is actually very close to me because my personal motto, if you want to call it, or the way I contextualize uh, my work and the projects that I'm involved in, the organizations that I'm involved in, and the boards that I'm involved in, is I ask myself three questions. The first question is, am I making anything? Is it, is it a group that's making something? And when I look at this important part of Akira Chicks' vision, building is probably one of the most important things that you will do. It is truly an exploration of your skills, your capabilities, but also your dreams. So she builds is the first and foremost important thing that you will do as a person because it enables you to learn, it enables you to iterate, it enables you to, 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 to grow in a way no one else can teach you. If we use the analogy of a house, you can have an architect who'll sit and draw beautiful, beautiful sketches. I mean, you know, you look at it and go, wow, this is amazing on paper. Or let's even think about the dreams that you have when you go to bed and you have this fantastic dream and you wake up and you're like, ah, I wish that wasn't a dream. But the thing is this, you will learn more, not from the dream, but from grabbing a wheelbarrow getting into the construction area and actually laying a foundation. In this case of Arkira Chicks, they've already laid the foundation for you. They organize outreach activities, they uh, organize boot camps. Uh, there's even space at the iHub that is upcoming around robotics. You can learn how to use Arduinos. You can start to instrument your world. To make a long story short, around building and this idea of making, it is quite central to what each of us can become better at. And it extrapolates to the rest of the economy because when we build something, not only can we touch it, and I'm not just talking about physical devices, I'm talking about services because some of you have built businesses or want to build businesses. So when I say build, I'm not saying just you know the, the physical uh, part of it. I'm also talking about building businesses because that's, that's part of our shared dream. So as we build, one of the first touchstones that we will need to remember is to be driven by function because as you get heads down in figuring out what it is you're building or what service you're providing, be driven by function, figuring out one is your user getting the utility that you set out to provide. Of course, are they paying you? But you will figure that out. That's pretty important. Uh, but really, to be driven by function so that when people use whatever it is you build, that they get the utility that you, you want to, to provide. Um, the next touchstone around she builds is, actually, this is where a quote of vanilla ice. Uh, <laughs> I don't, so I, I hear a couple of uh, laughs. Those are our generation of people who know what, who Vanilla Ice is. But if you don't know who Vanilla Ice is, maybe go on YouTube later, and please pardon me for the corniness that you will see. But he says something that uh, actually is another touchstone for building, and is, that's stop, collaborate, and listen. <laughs> and 
as you build, uh, this myth of a lone genius needs to go. Most of the times, a lot of the things that we've done, not only at Ushahidi and uh, uh, IHUB, it's because of collaboration. It's because of looking to the side and saying, you know, and having a confluence point where you realize you're good at this, I'm good at this, but together we can do this, you know. So, and listening is perhaps probably one of the other Apart from function, the other thing that you would need to listen to is uh, our users, our community, and the people that we want to serve. So that takes me to the next part. Actually, before I get to she serves, the other part is iterating. As you're building, it gives you a chance to iterate. And iterating is basically you have version one, version one A, version one B, version one C, on and on and on, until you get to version two, and then version three, and then version four. But the whole journey is one of iteration. And in that process, it's quite possible that you will fail. Um, this is where I have to acknowledge that we live in a culture that does not condone failure. So the hope here is that we can provide a little bubble of support, uh, not only through Akira Chicks, but the interactions that you have with each other, so that we can fail, but then we can also learn. Because what happens is when you fail, or when you work very hard building things, you get calluses on your hands. You get, you get these things on your hand, but they make you very tough, so that the next time when you do something else, you're tougher and you're better. So to iterate and not to fear failure, because uh, we're hoping to provide a, an environment that you, won't, you don't have to be depressed or feel bad about this. And that's actually not just my role. It's our role for each of us to help encourage each other. When someone is having a difficult time and feels like they're failing, try to lift them up and help them stand up again so that they can, con they can continue. That's the only way we can change the culture because it, it's how it is, right? Really, it, it, we're not, this is not something that's going to change tomorrow. It's in how we, uh, how we behave, uh, not only as leaders, but also as entrepreneurs, as students. It's in helping each other and not, not putting somebody down, like looking at them like, oh my goodness, that's failed, no. The question is, what have they learned? Can they share that with you? And can you help them up? Um, the next part of the Akira Chicks rebranding is She Serves. Now, this is something that also, um, depending on our life's path, many of us have non-linear life paths. You sort of, perhaps were one of the only computer scientists in your school or uh, one of the few nerds who found inspiration in Carl Sagan's books of astronomy, or you know, you, you read a, a scientist or saw a talk by a scientist and went, oh my God, my head is blown. You know, so there's some, all your stories are valid. However you discovered technology, whatever that path is, acknowledge it because it's very special. It can help you to embody what that means. Because as each of us chart our own paths in this thing called technology, because technology doesn't exist in, uh, it's not a finite thing. There's there the builders, the people who build, like the coders, or and then there's the implementers, there's the business people. So we all have a role to play in this larger construct of technology. But the path of inspiration the path of discovery, the path of learning is non-linear and unique. And in that uniqueness is where you will find your unfair advantage, right? This is where you will realize, hmm, I'm looking at this problem in a very interesting way. And you might, you might be able to commercialize that or you might be able to create something that people will go, 
I didn't know I didn't I didn't know I needed this, but I do. Why? Because you sat down and you acknowledged your path and you looked at a problem and you built something and there you go. So whatever it is your path in technology, it is always, like I'll just speak for myself, it's not linear. Like when in high school when I didn't know I wanted to be in technology. I, I was part of, I was chairperson of my computer club, um, probably the only girl who was interested in what these machines were and was looking at the Fortran book with, Fortran is a very old programming language, so. Uh, <laughs> and uh, looking at that book going, wow, this is interesting, and basically teaching yourself. So it could be a little bit of a lonely business, but look, your path is your path. The lessons that you learn along the way will guide you to be that special person that you need to be in order to create that special thing that people don't know yet that they need. Um, so really, to just acknowledge your path and to, to, to think about how you're serving, who are you helping, and uh, how best are you providing a solution to their needs. And inspiration, so the three touchstones around serving, one is inspiration comes in many ways. Like I mentioned, mine came from a book by Carl Sagan, um, Cosmos. I found out later that he had an amazing TV series. You could probably bit torrent it because I think it's available for free uh, and also on PBS. And uh, it's this incredible series about the universe and our, and our place in it and science, uh, science as a candle in the dark, if you want to call it. Um, so inspiration comes in many ways and to be open to that. Uh, if you're inspired by creating Shazam for birds, I don't, whatever that is, it's an important touchstone for you and figuring out what it is, what are the questions you'd like to ask, or even the NP complete problem in computer science. All those problems that we share with the rest of the world in our uh, curricula, it's quite possible that one of you might be able to solve some of these problems that have plagued computer scientists for decades. Why not? Why not? Because you might be inspired to see something in a different way, and you, you might be able to solve those mathematical problems that are a touchstone of computer science. And then the last part of She Serves is um, mentoring and opening up the door for others. Uh, Akira Chicks has been giving back to all of us, really. Uh, they're giving back to the girls who go through the training program, through outreach. They're giving back to us right now uh, with this conference. And how are we going to serve and give back to the community? The Akira Chicks community here, the women in tech community here in Kenya, but also Akira Chicks and each of you is becoming a shining light for the rest of the world. How do we serve the rest of the world? What are the lessons that we're learning? What are the things that are unique about us that we can share with the rest of the world? You are truly a beacon and in that way, Akira Chicks is showing us that we can serve each other, but then we can also serve others. And, um, Like I said, this caps uh, a very special week for myself and the people that I've collaborated with over the past couple of years. I'm reminded by something that we, we read and stuck with me, and this is that myths are energizing, right? Myths are very, very powerful. And what is happening today is very, very special. Because as we stand here and with the program that is coming up today, you will be able to learn from each other, but more importantly, we will be able to walk away to tell better and newer stories about what it means to be a woman in technology and what it means to lead as a woman in technology and what it means to be Kenyan, to be African, to be a citizen of the world or to be a local of the internet, whatever your identity, our identities are pretty mixed. You know, we, we're not only locals of 
Nairobi. We're also locals of Eldoret or locals of other cities, of other locations. All of these places make us very special individuals. And you giving up your Saturday to join us here today is a very meaningful thing, not only for myself, but I think also for the Akira Chicks team and the community in general, that you would take the time to explore what it means to create this very first women in tech conference. I think I, I feel really, really honored and privileged. I feel like we're standing at a moment in history. It's been a long week. We had Ban Ki-moon yesterday, and he said when he met the, uh, the girls from Akira Chicks and got to see what was happening in the ecosystem, he said, one, it's something he had no clue about. It's the one inspiring thing he had not heard about. And lastly, and this is where I'll stop, is that you are the hope of Africa. You are the hope of Kenya. You're the hope of Africa and you're the hope of the world. And last but not least is just your stories are yet to be told. Some of them are already being told right now. They're yet to be told. And I cannot wait to hear newer, better stories that form energizing myths that will open up the door for others. Thank you so much for your attention.